Hi ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Genshin news, information, hype, excitement, etc. All that stuff. We're getting so much stuff and it's kind of hilarious. Uh, we're going to talk about it in a minute, but we're going to talk about the new update, but we're also mainly going to be talking about the new characters that Mahoyo actually showcased ahead of time, or at least teased ahead of time. Um, a lot of them look incredibly compelling. Also, this is so far away. Anyways, a lot of them look fantastic and incredibly interesting, and I want to talk to you about them because we've kind of known about them in some shades for a while. Um, also, I am incredibly, incredibly dizzy. Uh, I woke up this morning, felt like shit. Forgive me if I feel a little off or look a little off or look a little pale. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like just rat shit. Anyway, let's just jump right into the deep end. Okay, okay. <laughs> Look at that, that is so unbelievably sick. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about what essentially Mahoyo did. Now, if you guys were not aware or privy to this information, essentially, uh, Mahoyo, um, be with 1.6 about to come out. Um, I believe they were worried about data miners actually like unlocking their secrets, especially now that they kind of made them their enemy by being like, you're the worst, we're suing you, we're gonna fuck you up. I think data miners were like, all right, idiot, I'll use a VPN and just, there, there's an even more incentive to do what they don't want to do because they made it, they lashed out about people doing it, if that makes any sense. Um, so anyways, I think they knew that was going to happen, so Mahoyo got ahead of the curve and actually released teases for a lot of the new characters. Now, they haven't released um, everything in terms of what their abilities are or anything like that, but the, we know they're coming, and the funniest thing is, is that a lot of people, if not everybody in the community, has known they're coming for a long time. In fact, if you go to any any of Mahoyo's or Paimon's tweets and you click open them, in the replies, there's like a dozen people being like, is they, what, when is this character coming? What, blah, 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 and just constant, the constancy of that shit. Like, there's a Dendro character that we've known about forever. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a little bit sad we don't actually get to see that. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about this brand new character, and we're gonna go in order that I am the most excited for these characters. So, first of all, um, we will get into 1.6, but right now we're gonna be talking about what looks like 1.7 to maybe 1.8 to whatever it may be. Some people are jumping the gun, I think, uh, but also it makes sense that maybe 1.7 we are getting into Zuma, but let's just chill for a hot minute kind of kind of thing. Regardless, um, let's talk about the new characters. Okay, so the first new character is what we've maybe possibly known about for a while, which is a Pyro Bow user. Now, we knew about that, but we didn't know about her actual animations um, or what she looks like, essentially. Uh, and oh my god, God, um, this brings me back to Ganyu. Whenever I, when I first seen Ganyu, I was just like, I can't. I should. The, the, there's certain characters where like a lot of people, a lot of people like certain characters like Mona or like Jean. I don't personally uh, like get it. They it, it just for me and my sense of like, oh, I think that looks aesthetic or enjoyable. I don't really get it. Um, I got Eula. Eula looks badass and she looks wicked and all these things. But this character, if she's a five star and if she's good, like even even if it's like close to gone, you good, I'm I'm full sending it. I'm full sending it. Not only that, but I also need a bow user in my team. That's more of a me thing, but still. Um, her her look is absolutely sick. I love the kind of like fucking spiked hair kind of ponytail madness coupled with like just the the uh, the badass like a samurai fucking uh, girl, like what is it called like titty wrap essentially <laughs> what it's called um, and then I love the fucking bow on the back um, depending on how how like animated that is that's gonna be wicked. And also, she looks like, uh, what do you call it? She's like wearing short shorts and shit. Just looks aesthetic AF. <laughs> okay. And um, we know that they're going to be, a, she's a fire character. Not only because of Lynx, but, but also because um, at the top here, you guys can see that it shows uh, the element that they are, as well as it shows the color of the element that they are. Um, so the thing with this character that's a little nutty is that, ladies and gentlemen, this is a fire archer character. Now, yes, we have Amber. Um, but this is a five-star archer character, and last time we got an archer character, it happened to be a fucking tank of an archer character who was gone. You who kind of broke the meta, um, or broke the whole balancing system of the game. So now we have an archer character that also happens to be fire, and melt is a huge, huge thing. And if she is in any, any way like gone, you where it's like a charge, charge, and then smash hard as shit. That's wild. The reason why is because Pyro has an innate debuff, or sorry, Melt or Vaporize, have an innate debuff that you need to reapply elements within a cycle. But, 
if you're waiting and just like sitting there chilling and charging up your shot, you, the interval is going to be perfectly timed with by the when the when the element uh, can be reapplied essentially, uh, which can be huge. <laughs> so madness. Um, but I don't know if she'll work in the same way. I did. I we are aware of some things about her. I'm not going to spoil them, but but not not a lot of her abilities are confirmed but there are some things that we can elaborate on and by the way we're gonna go hard in the paint with this character because this is the one that i'm the most excited for because yeah her she has mad potential also her aesthetic look to me is just on a whole new level uh depending on how she actually looks yeah she she i don't know i just like everything about it she looks like like open and bright and like that kind of uh kind of vibe the reds and the oranges just complement each other with the blonde it's like everything i don't know that's my stupid aesthetic brain or like my uh style brain going on <laughs> but anyways so this is some things yeah she's a pyro character it tells you right there but also it says this she's the owner of the <laughs> firework <laughs> fireworks festival thing so that leads me to believe that this character is going to function around that idea um of fireworks now is that like uh, there could be many different ways that they could go with this character. She is an archery character, and you think they would want to implement that into her kit to some extent. She could be a support, but it's probably more, it's probably easier to bet on the fact that she is some variant of a DPS and whatnot. But she could, in a way, be both. Um, and what I mean by that is her E could be something like she puts down a box of fireworks and it constantly starts spewing out random fireworks in a random direction, kind of like Boba, um, or, uh, like Fischl's Oz, maybe, we'll see. Um, or it could be something as simple as, like, a, a CC or, uh, or whatever. Uh, you don't think it would be something like Ganyu, which is, like, a crowd control, or, sorry, like, a aggro, uh, dummy, because there's just too many archers that kind of have that ability. Um, so it'd be cool to see her have like official thing where she throws out like this box of fireworks and just starts spewing damage everywhere and can hit and can't hit and yeah it just makes that happen and it constantly reapplies fire everywhere that'd be really cool but um i'm hoping especially with how successful ganyu was is that she is kind of an echo of purely being a dps maybe uh, i don't know what her alt would be um maybe just a giant fucking nuke um, rather than a sustained DPS kind of thing like on you but to me they could go two ways with the firework thing because there's already like a charge mechanic in play so you would just charge your shot and then set off a firework the question is is it going to be a firework that's like one big um, arrowhead with a with a basically a payload on it that sparkles and uh, with a firework explosion but also deals like one giant impact damage similar to a gone you or and this is kind of what I'm hoping um, I hope I'm hoping that she kind of gives us the opposite aspect of Ganyu. So Ganyu is all about charge, charge, nuke, charge, charge, nuke. Um, whereas her, I'm hoping it would be charge, charge, missile barrage. I'm hoping that it would be like you set off your firework and then instead of it just being one arrow, it would be like a sea of tiny little fireworks that sprinkle off and and wreck um, in, in their own way. That to me would be so, so much better more interesting cool um and yeah would also play into the whole firework meta because i don't know rarely is there one her alt could be that big firework and her her normal firing could just be a bunch of tiny little uh sparkles of of, of just nothing but little tiny uh, uh specks of uh fireworks Gar. point being my friends i am absolutely thrilled and i this is a character i'm wishing for i'm waiting i'm waiting and i'm waiting and i'm waiting and i'm also what i shouldn't say i, I am wishing for her because i said the same thing about ganyu and then i just circumstances happen and i chose not to but um i'm worried about her constellation i'm worried about her skills her character design looks sick i do need an archer character so that's where i'm at so two boxes are checked is her kit fun and good um is her is all of her damage in her constellation god i hope not um and yeah we'll see right now if she's a dbs um and she's an archer character and she's fire based that has a lot of like the bells rung but we're gonna get into it there are several different updates um they're coming basically buffs to electro superconduct every other like uh reaction like element because inazuma is coming and whatnot um but yeah i just again love her look so even if she's able to do like s like lower damage than like a ganyu or like a Who's, that, who's the other king of damage? A Eula. I'd be fucking thrilled just because her look is so sick. And also the ability for you to be able to throw damage across distances is insanely valuable. Um, but I do hope she has different mechanics than Ganyu. I don't just want to do charge, hit, charge, hit. I want to do charge and then fucking like unleash a, just a <laughs> fucking barrage of fireworks. That's what I want. But we'll see if we get it. 
Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, also some highlights. Uh, she's the queen of the uh, summer festival, which I imagine it's going to be some Inazuma kind of like similar to Mondstadt like uh, events. Yeah, and people are definitely assuming Inazuma is coming on the, in the next patch because they're talking about how this is like uh, s celebrates Inazuma's uh, yearly festival thing. So why the hell would how the hell would she get? to Mondstadt or something, you know, we clearly are going there and going to participate in the, in the festivities, I think. But here's some things about her. She possesses an exuberant creativity and passion for the firework display. Um, by the way, I'm going to butcher her name. Um, yo, 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 ah, fuck me. Uh, yo, e, I'm going to call her Yomi, <laughs> even though I know it's not right. Forgive me. One of y'all have to yell at me <laughs> or I'll have to hear it in passing in other content creators videos and I hope I'm on the right track. Um, Anyways, uh, Yomi has a childlike innocence and uh, is often found playing simple yet timeless games with children or accompanying them to find shiny trinkets and toys. The purity of children brings her unparalleled joy. She also enjoys social interaction and sizes every opportunity oh seizes every opportunity to talk to people um she appears to have endless anecdotes and ideals to be shared that's so awesome <laughs> so she's basically a very bubbly person loves kids uh what was it called uh maternal vibes all that um but also she's a, she's a talkative person always has something to say love it um and she always likes to share ideas love it love all that it just seems like a very joyous person to be around i can't relate as much <laughs> but it's still cute anyway Principles and craftsmanship are uh, Yomi's gr uh, dearest qu uh, qualities. Fuck me. <laughs> Can't speak. I'm sick. Don't look at me. Even though fireworks are fleeting, their blaze and warmth live in people's hearts forever. That's absolutely brilliant. These fleeting marvels are an experience of protection. I'm loving all this. <laughs> I'm saving. Fuck all these other people. So, sorry. There's two characters that I'm really in interested in. So, that's her. She is, seems... I'm, I full send it. <laughs> I full send it right now. I said the same thing about a lot of characters, and then I seen their kit, and I'm like, they, they, they don't fit in anywhere. <laughs> they don't fit within my current characters. What do I do? I can't fucking build like six other characters to make one character. No. But, <laughs> but I shouldn't, that shouldn't be how that works. Also, she could be, we could get her in the test arena, and she could suck ass. <laughs> I'm like, all right, listen, I love your look. I just can't. I can't. Um, but also, we're at a place in Genshin where I could, because I can get past most stuff in the, in the game, so it's not like it's it's one of those anyways we spent way too much time on her no we didn't because she's perfect get away from me anyways ladies and gentlemen and now we have this character which some people are saying they don't know what she is she is an animal character because we've known about her for a while uh this character actually we've known about her for a long long while and we I, we kind of i don't want to get into her abilities too much but regardless um she's an animal character she is also a part of the chibi slash tiny folk uh, community um and and she's a cute little raccoon or whatever it is. <laughs> it's either a raccoon or a panda. I'm assuming it's like a panda. Who knows? Regardless, uh, panda, trash panda, same shit. Regardless, uh, Sayu, definitely miss saying that, um, is also a Claymore user, which I don't know if they say. Uh, Animo, Ninja, all that. Doesn't say she's a, a Claymore user, but that's what we learned about in leaked things. Maybe it's maybe they, they could change that potentially, but we've known about her for a while as um, a animal character that is basically going to use a Claymore because that's how she's able to use a Claymore. She's a tiny girl, but with the power of wind, makes the big ass blade lighter, can whip that shit around like a ways like a feather, uh, which is dope regardless yes so she's an animal character and she's also a part of a ninja tribe so expect that to kind of be involved in her kit the ability to probably do burst damage i don't know what her alt is again she's a ninja class um by the way guys these are the two characters again i'm, I'm showing you guys these characters in the order that i'm the most excited for these two characters are a hard uh i i, I want to get them not just because i love i love overlord man the, the anime slash manga just won me over on the lovely trope of like her people being their inverse basically so you have this tiny little child who's in a little panda panda uh, suit or whatever raccoon suit and she's wielding a giant greatsword and she happens to be a ninja i'm all in <laughs> i like the weirdness i like the complete like okay tiny child maybe magic no giant sword <laughs> let's go um, so yeah, I, I really want to get her as well. She seems fantastic, uh, and her kit seems interesting. Again, any sort of like, well, we'll see, but from what we've seen around, 
pretty interesting. Also, she's an animal character and Swirl is getting buffed on a passive. Uh, so any sort of Swirl elemental thing is going to get buffed, um, which we'll get into when we're covering the new um, things. As of her, let me read up on what she's got going on. Are you in a hurry to find a Sayu? Oh, I see. She usually hides in the trees in the afternoon. I have many of my own ways of finding her. So please, let me know if you need help. Oh, but if I interfere, then I will deny you the pleasure of finishing the task on your own, won't I? Uh, Kamisato uh, Ayato, so it's not the same. So people were talking about this where they're also hinting at like new characters that we're going to be interacting with within Inazuma who are also probably going to be five stars. You know, we interacted with Gon Yu significantly before we actually got the powerhouse that she was. So yeah, a pint-sized agile ninja associated with the um, height has never been one of uh, Sayu's strengths. She stops growing a long time ago, long enough that she feels like she is trapped in a dream where time has stopped. Weird. Is she like one of those weird creatures, like an adeptus weirdness that gives her immortality, basically? I don't know. I bet she's got some animal ears there or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, crazy. Why am I not growing taller? Am I not getting enough sleep? And just like that, uh, the pint-sized ninja who woke to this thought drifted off to sleep again. Okay, uh, Sayu firmly believes that sleep can replenish um, all her energy and helps her grow taller. Okay, so she's a sleepy girl. She likes her rest. In order to live by these principles and have uh, as much time to nap as possible, she honed her ninjutsu uh, to perfection, uh, fleeing, hiding, transforming. Sayu is the master of all ninjutsu techniques. An unsuspecting leaf or a... Uh, a bucket. It might just be Sayu's many disguises. Weird. <laughs> you can turn into a leaf? <laughs> just make any sense? <laughs> Fucking, I guess magic exists in this world, but still, shit. She looks great. She looks so cool. So cute. Um, uh, what do you call it? She also looks, I don't know, when she's wielding a, a big ass sword. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope they didn't nerf her sword. I know there's like clipping issues potentially, but I really hope they didn't like take this potential claymore user and like shrink her weapon down because that's what they do with the swords and the bows and shit they shrink the weapon down i want her to have a full full size great sword just walking it around even if she only uses like the wind she's basically like a catalyst user but with a sword i'd be so in i wonder if this act like if, if they'll ever do like a time jump and she'll actually be like a full adult in like in, in like the next couple years and she'll be like yeah i finally did it but yeah it's all about her personality is essentially growing taller and liking naps i know some of y'all are in uh, I like her design and I like the idea of, of the chaos of a tiny child whipping around a giant piece of uh, slab of metal. So we're probably going to go for her as well. If, if they don't do her back to back, which they very well might. We'll see. Also, I'm sorry I'm hiding from you guys. I just like leaning to the left. Anyways, um, so yeah, she's great. Can't wait. We got Kazuha. We know, confirmed Kazuha. Um, I am a little bit more excited for what Kazuha has. Um, I guess that's not true. I'm probably more excited for Ayaka. I didn't really pace these out really well. But regardless, we know a lot about Kazuha. We're going to learn about him in a minute. Kazuha. Jesus. Um, looks great. We've seen some gameplay of him. We actually know a lot more about him than everyone, everybody else. Um, good stuff. Fun stuff. Let's, uh, finish it up. Okay, so now we have Ayaka. Ayaka we've known about for a hot, hot minute. Um, now, I think people are also... Being a little sus with Ayaka saying that she's not going to be as strong. I think, first of all, we know they're going to buff her. Like, the same thing I think that they did with Xiao, to some extent. Um, but I do think that they may not buff her as much as people may like need them to need them to in order for people to want Ayaka but here's the thing um if I'm not mistaken Ayaka is built around the idea of uh being a burst um burst damage so she basically she's kind of like Venti in the same in the same way except less CC and more just a giant air area of damage and slashes um and like wind hits except not wind it's like ice hits but regardless um yeah so she's basically like, like similar to a eula if i'm not mistaken like just this mass damage um kind of character with her alt so she just spews out her alt and wrecks shit and i think her base attack can also scale up to be pretty damn good too so she can kind of it's exactly like eula where her base attack can fuck shit up but her main thing is just trying to get to her alt so that she can death from a thousand cuts you um, which is incredibly, uh, it seems like helpful or like a good character. Um, but some people could be like, well, wait, why wouldn't I just use my, my like four characters and not have to build her alt or maybe just use my existing characters. I think Ayaka is going to be the idea. And I could be mistaken is Ayaka is like a, a burst character. So you're going to need her alt in order for her to profit. Um, and I think there is, there is kind of rumblings that the Archon 
in the electro region, the electro energy region is going to have skills that facilitate energy recharge. So she's going to be a battery, um, CC, um, and if you have enough constellations, DPS. So that's what people maybe possibly are speculating that she's going to be. Um, so to me, I'm like, okay, maybe they're pa pairing like Ayaka and her, but it will actually really work because if you get both, then they can, Ayaka can basically just constantly have her alt to spew out and you can just build full into attack percent, um, critical rate and crit damage and not have to focus on energy recharge at all. Um, and just use this character as like a battery essentially. Maybe possibly will see, but it'd be really, really cool for them to introduce like an actual battery like character. That'd be dope. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting on to actual stuff. So that, again, that all of that was just essentially Mahoyo being like, "Oh my God, shit." Um, uh, uh, we're, we're assuming we're gonna release 1.6. We're in fact, I think they did. They released the pre-install for 1.6. So in the same night that they did that, I think they're also giving they gave people all the data mined um, information already, um, but not as not all of it. So again. I still want to know what the abilities for all of those characters are. Now, will we get that? No, there's too many characters that they released. Um, I would assume we're going to get Ayaka and, um, yeah. How, how do you think these are going to play out? I think we're going to get Ayaka and maybe Leaf Girl. Yeah, I think we're going to get Ayaka and maybe Fire Girl because it would make sense that we're being introduced. Actually, no. No, I bet we're not. I bet it's going to be Ayaka and then the Leaf Girl is what we're probably going to get in the 1.7. The reason why is because this is her whole story is tied to this festival, which I could see being an afterthought after the events of uh, of us getting to Inazuma happen. So I feel like she's probably going to come later, which sucks. But also, she's definitely I think she's on. I, I there are polls that people were doing. Everyone's into this style, look, and potential of like a Ganyu variant of of uh, bow user and shit. Also, who doesn't like the idea of like whipping arrows that happen to be fireworks and just ha creating like beautiful uh, effects is also sick if they go that way, which we can hope a man can dream. Anyways, uh, so yeah, that, that's what they did. Um, now let's get into like current stuff, what's coming in 1.6. I'll try to burn through these because we've already spent too much time talking about the new characters, but that's what I'm, I'm interested in right now. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we have the Spark Knight uh, amongst us, <laughs> um, I believe. So, we have the Klee banner coming. We're going to talk about some stuff in sequence here, but um, the banner is also coming with Fischl, massive, um, and um, Sucrose, really decent as well, really good actually, and also Barbara, which everybody has and also is just with consolation just gets better at what she already is already too good at. So weird. Um, but regardless, people are highly expecting that the new free-to-play um, version of her her special book, the Dodoku uh, Tales Catalyst, was going to be massive, and it is, but it isn't. The thing that really makes this thing fall apart is it scales off of attack percentage, which is it's not like crit rate. If it was crit rate, then it'd be like holy shit, yeah, you could just build crit damage and have a good bit here still. Also, what it does is normal attacks uh, hit an opponent, uh, increase your charge damage by 16 for 6 seconds. So you just attack some normal attacks, this constantly is going to be reapplied, and you do a charge attack and it's going to slam. Um, which is actually, this is, it's funny because it's Dodoku, but it's very much made for Yenfi, just with that. Because Yenfi is all about building up stacks with normal attacks, then to smash down. Um, I guess she scales more with pyro than, than attack percent, but still, I think it's going to be very utilized. Regardless, um, charge attacks hit an opponent, increase uh, attack by 8% for 6 seconds. And I believe, yeah, this is at refinement 1, so that can get more and more and more. And I can look into what, just, just, just take a little, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, yeah, that gets up to 32%. That's pretty good. It's a pretty good amount of attack, as well as it also gets up to 16%. Uh, percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, at least I think that's the same one. Regardless, it's gonna get it's gonna get significantly better as you progress uh, with that. So that's pretty huge. Um, again, that to me is like made for Yenfi and not not Klee, <laughs> but we'll we'll see. Uh, even though I know I know that also is how Klee is played is basically a lot of her damage comes from her char from her charge attacks. It just seems like it's not worth juice ain't worth the squeeze. 
Um, so they may tweak Klee. Regardless, we also have this weapon coming. Might as well talk about this now. Fischl is also on Klee's banner. And this is very much a bow, weirdly enough, designed specifically for a four-star character, it seems, with color design and everything, which is Fischl, um, which is interesting because usually they only do that for five stars. At least they've only been doing that recently for five stars. Regardless, um, what this bow does is it scales off of physical damage, which is the white dot from her base attack, and normal attacks hit on opponents uh, increase your elemental skills damage by 20%. Elemental skill hits, um, which is your E by, by the way, um, increases your normal attack. So this feeds into, uh, basically you're getting 40% um, with with Fischl. So you pop Oz, he hits an enemy for five seconds, you're getting 20% uh, more attack and uh, on your normal attack, and if you hit an enemy with your with your bow uh, for five seconds, Oz is getting a buff, a 20% buff to his attack, uh, just flying things out. So again, very, very much made for exactly Fischl. I don't know who else this plays really well with, um, especially just considering it scales off physical damage. Um, but this is also only really good, um, I should warn you guys, it's only really good for people who play Fischl as a main DPS Fischl build, which is possible, especially if you're a free-to-play. I do think they probably should have gave you this for free, um, because it is... It's kind of a niche build, and it's good, so it's not crazy. Fischl uh, as a main DPS is good. Again, good, just not absurdly good. Um, so I don't know why you couldn't have this be a, an olive branch to free-to-play players, but whatever. Regardless, as of the weapon banner... Oh, by the way, uh, for the banner itself, the whole Klee banner, I would suggest skipping it. Um, you got Barbara on there. If you get a lot of Barbaras, probably not going to be too happy. Sucrose is dope. Fischl's dope. Yeah, Klee... I, I, people keep talking about this, but she's kind of aged out of of the game. But if you want a cute character, and, it, and also she's she, she's too tied into uh, into her constellations with a lot of her like utility and power, which I think Mahoyo has learned to like put the best constellations at the top of the of the tree if you're going to even do that. Um, and yeah, um, but also a lot of her constellations at the very bottom are nuts. So if you're a whale, 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 then you can. But even then, I still see whales not use Klee as much even now. So I just, I think this banner is relatively don't, don't. But apparently Kazuha's banner is going to be stacked like you would not believe in terms of DPSs because Kazuha is kind of a support. Um, apparently Razor and Ro Rosaria might be on there. Absolutely massive. We'll see. Could be bullshit, but it kind of makes sense, uh, especially with them probably wanting to make up for the lack of content here. But it makes sense. Barbara makes sense to be on here because she has a new outfit. Um, but and and then and then they're like, oh shit! Now we need to make the banner vi like valuable, so we're gonna put Fischl, who's a great support, and Sucrose, who's a great support. But um, if you already have those characters or have no interest in those characters, then it kind of falls a little flat. Where did I put this thing? There it is. Weapon banner. Um, weapons are old now, and Vonius spear is dope. The bell is meh. The the fire sword is meh. Um, Fischl's weapon is cool, but not crazy. Um, actually, an official's weapon could be st insane if it keeps getting better as you as you level up because it's already at 20 Maybe it only goes to 30, but still it'd be pretty, pretty damn good regardless um, do Yeah, don't wish on the weapon banner ever period um, unless you're like already having all of your characters built You already have all the teams you need and you're just sitting on like what is essentially 20 20,000 primo gems Then yes, then it makes sense for you to go ahead and wish on the weapon banner, but that's basically just because you're like you're you're done. <laughs> you're burning experience, or you're burning uh, time until you can get to the next character. But um, after all of this, my friends, now we have access to the where is it? General preview for 1.6. Okay, so we we already know what's happening. Uh, we that's what we're gonna be. These are the rewards that we're gonna be attaining. Again, I would consider getting the catalyst, even though it does scale off attack percent, which is less good. It's still's base thing of like increasing your charge attacks. I think that's how most DPS catalyst users will work. So get that. Um, man, I really hope. Ooh, I really hope. Now they wouldn't. Shit. <laughs> I was really hoping that Yenfi would be on. Uh, what's his name's banner? on uh, on uh, uh, her banner um but yeah <laughs> but no it's a fire character on a fire character wouldn't make sense regardless um you're going to need to be adventure rank 1 or 21 in order to participate it seems like in a lot of these events we're getting story quests we're getting new skins as well as some silly mini games we're also getting the jean skin which by the way the jean skin is not free you will have to pay for it it is at a discount within the events um and it is also 30 dollars after the event um and i think it's like 22 dollars or something whilst the event is going on which is absurd. I I might make a video or or like uh, I talked about it when you we were streaming, and I might just edit that video and give it to you guys because yeah, that's 
Symbol shit. <laughs> Simply put, symbol shit. And again, this is Klee's batter. Uh, Barbara, kind of a wash, but it makes sense why they did it. Because uh, she's gotten, getting a skin for her, essentially. But everyone gets Barbara for free. So yeah, that makes no sense, actually. Uh, regardless, official solid sucrose is amazing uh, as well. And uh, and yeah, Klee is, Klee is cute and adorable, but uh, aged a little bit out of the meta. And Mahoyo hasn't looked like they're going to buff her in any way to make her so that she can actually keep her head above water. Um, and it's not that she needs that necessarily either. If you happen to get Klee, you can definitely make her work and definitely make her good. Um, it's just, again, it's like the, it's there's the, there's high risk when playing Klee to, a, to an extent, and there's not that much reward for the extent of the risk, if that makes any sense. We also got the events. Again, we already know a lot about this. You need to be adventure rank 20 to participate in this one, where you're basically just fighting in this awesome battle arena. Um, on And you're going to get primo gems just for completing it, and you're going to get uh, experience books and such, um, and level uh, an ascension material if you actually put on a lot of the modifiers it seems um adventure rank uh boosted bundles these are just pay for things so the season pass is the same uh, weapons and uh the boosted bundles are also the same thing nothing has changed there uh so yeah 1.6 my friends is definitely uh kind of adding up to be a, a filler patch which we've expected also one thing i didn't want to let, yell at you guys for um they keep telling us that this 1.6 is islands and like ex all the places are going to go away which means you can't sleep on this content as much as you would like it means do all the things in the area explore the islands hopefully pick up some chests get all that done because this is going away it's gone um so that also i think means do kazuha's story quest as, as soon as you possibly can do Klee's story quest if it's tied to the island it will be gone so you need to do them as soon as you probably can Otherwise, they potentially you could just lose out uh, lose out on the primo gems that you could attain from this. Other side things that they that's is somewhere in the like tr it's just trove of uh, updates um, or update patch information. There's a lot of stuff coming to 1.6 outside of the events. There is patches for you're basically you're able to place characters in your Serena teapots, um, and you're going to be able to build certain uh, like areas so that they can they can generate more friendship points and just give you more dialogue and stuff like that so if you want to do that you can or prepare for that you can you can go into the hu honey impact and it'll actually tell you all of the bells and whistles that you need to level up those characters or to have it as soon as uh, 1.6 goes live as well as um the, the uh, electro buffs are coming in 1.6 um there is an elemental mastery buff um, and in, uh, an electro and basically every other thing besides melt and vaporize. So su superconduct, swirl, um, electricity, shatter, all of those things are getting buffed in 1.6. Uh, we'll see to the extent in which they are. Um, people are assuming that a lot of this is because of uh, Inazuma. Electro is coming in 1.7, so they wanted to make sure that there was already... Like, you wouldn't get to Inazuma, play with a lot of the electro characters, and be like, oh shit, this is useless. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that plays. But ladies and gentlemen, that was a lot of a lot to talk about and to update. Um, but yes, um, I cannot wait for this character, the one we're looking at right now. I hope, I hope, I hope um, she her kit works. It's fun. It's interesting. Again, she's a firework person. Uh, that's her whole business. So I'm very much hoping that they incorporate that into her kit outside of just having an alt where she calls down a, a basically a nuke. Um, and instead, her like she, I'm hoping that she's a main DPS that kind of her main attack, her charge and shoot and charge and shoot, uh, function like s shooting off sparklers or fireworks. I would hope that's the case, and I would hope that it's not just an identical copy of Gone You, where she's just holding a payload of a firework and then boom, it does a massive AOE damage. I would hope it's just like a barrage of like a th death by a thousand cuts archer. Um, but we'll see. And then maybe her alt is that heavy hit that people want. I don't know what her E could be. Again, her E could be like official where she throws down a bunch of fireworks um, and uh, and it does damage over time. Or it could be like a stun. We'll see. Like a bunch of, uh, 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 yeah, sparklers basically is make people disoriented or, or want to hit it, whatever. Uh, we shall see. But regardless, her look is on on Cloud Nine. I love the way she's designed. I also love the way um, the cute little uh, the cute little animo sword ninja is also. Uh, made um, but if their kits are on the same banners then i'm probably gonna maybe skip the animal girl and go for the archer just because i like her look so much i didn't i didn't expect that by the way i didn't think i like the archer fire person as much as i do but i just like the idea that like adding her design and then throwing in the idea of fireworks i'm like oh, okay that could be really fun that could be like an visually enjoyable and all that kind of process 
Um, but ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys do enjoy the rest of your day. That was us covering, um, of course, Gen uh, Genshin news information. Um, again, good on Mahoyo for releasing all of the this content ahead of time. I think that's a, a decent way to do it, especially when they're kind of in somewhat control of being like, okay, here's a high-res image of the character rather than seeing a shitty cutout and then having to speculate about what they do and what they are. This way we can kind of angle the community in a direction um, rather than their expectations playing tricks on them and making them frustrated when it's not that. So this way we can kind of push them in the right direction. Hey, this character is an animal character. Hey, this character is a ninja. Expect ninja-like shit. Don't expect an animal character with a claymore user and expect them to just be pure DPS and not support because they're a ninja. She's going to debuff things or whatever, right? Uh, but we'll see what happens with the community. But I like this a lot. Um, thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in with me, putting up with me. Also, we will continue to cover this as, as well as everything and anything Genshin because I'm enjoying the game still to this day. But I will say that it does seem like a lot of people are kind of winding down when it comes to Genshin and getting ready, especially now that we know it's coming, getting ready to buff, crown, level up talents, uh, max characters out to 90 instead of... Of jumping to, uh, to to other characters, jumping to that character, jumping to this character. I think at this point, people are probably going to be like, "Okay, well, there are there are going to be people that fall succumb to the hype of like do, uh, people are playing the character in the test arena or seeing videos of like character doing bajillions of damage and being like, "Okay, I need that character that can carry me," even though you probably can do already a lot of the stuff in the game, and they'll do that. But I feel like a lot of people at this point have already kind of went through that cycle <laughs> and are kind of like, "Okay, I just need to like hold back, set up shop." get some shit done uh, that I need to get done that I've been putting off, level up my characters so that I can crown their asses, um, figuring out what I want to do, um, what characters are like, I want to be my A-grade team, like, yeah, I can beat the content in the game, but I can't fucking kill it, and I want to kill it, <laughs> even though there's not a point to killing it yet, but there might be with an Inazuma, we shall see. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the long video, there was a lot to cover, and honestly, I just wanted to theory craft with you guys about the upcoming characters, and we'll definitely be doing this on stream, on the weekend, on Friday, and on Sunday. Um, talking about these characters and what the potentially they could do. Um, I don't know too many spoilers about them, but uh, be careful when tuning into those streams. <laughs> we may go hard. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again, and goodbye. Also, if you liked the video or supported it, thank you so much. Don't deserve you. Appreciate you. Also, if you watched all of it, you're absolutely perfect. <laughs> thank you and goodbye.